married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. What's going on, y'all? This is DeAndre Williams. I just wanted to give a quick testimony about the services that I've been receiving from Ernie Kaysen and Married Into Crazy. Um, it's amazing. Um, they uh, provide everything I need, and it's helped me transition to another level in my business. So if you're out there, reach out to Ernie Kaysen and Married Into Crazy, and they will provide great service. Welcome to episode 123 of the Married in the Crazy podcast with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. And as always, like we always do. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As you can tell, she's on one. She's definitely on one. I, I want whatever she was smoking earlier. Wow, really? Something. Hey, so. I came home and I took a nap. Oh, that, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, so that's the secret to life as you get older it's so funny because earlier today I was just thinking about man I really need a nap yeah. it's, a, it's so funny how when you're when you're a child and you just think it, when you're told to take a nap it's and punishment. the first thing they do is cry I don't want to take a nap like you're gonna miss out on something that's actually where FOMO started fear of missing <laughs> out it's when it's time to take naps as a baby and then the older you get and you're like mm, I just need to get 20 minutes. I can just get 20, 25 Man. minutes in. So uh, hopefully nobody was taking a nap this past week because there was a lot going on. You've got playoff football. Playoffs? I know. Some and teams didn't know they were in the playoffs. My team, Steelers, uh, apparently didn't, <laughs> oh they did not get the memo. Oh, it was so sad. I was like, honestly, I was glad that you were not in there to see the very first play of the game. So I don't want to hear about it. Okay. I'm not watching any highlights. I don't need to, I, I have enough so-called friends. That Remember, we talk about creating an iron tribe, having the right people around you. Apparently, I don't have the right family or people around me because they were blowing my phone up. I was I was at a business consultation that I was doing. Um, actually, no, no, I'm sorry. No, I wasn't. I wasn't doing the business consultation. I was on the um, They Got Unmarried conference call. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and so, anyway, people were blowing up my phone, talking all kinds of smack. They don't love me. Babe, I didn't even know I try. If you would have no, if you would have saw that, you would have just been my mom. I was like, wait, what? I was braiding my niece's hair, so I wasn't on the call with Levy, and she was just like, oh my god, is that supposed to happen? <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, that's bad. Baby, okay, not. changing subjects. Okay, sorry. Changing sorry, subjects. Sorry. You know, there's a, there's a lot of other things. There's the debacle in DC. Yeah, that's about it. That's yeah, yeah, we're, we're not going to go that, into that because we don't like to use curse words and we also said that we're going to avoid politics on this particular podcast that was not politics that was okay but we're so stop. anyway yeah we're just pray pray <laughs> CC. pray yeah pray incessantly for our country Everybody. um so anyway so we're going to keep moving on keep it moving because i just stopped this in our tracks so <laughs> so we we're always looking for things to do together and one of the things that we used to love, so when we first got together, and what we love to do is watch movies. Our thing we still love to watch movies. was going to the theater. Mm -hmm. People knew that if you wanted to get us a gift, you would get us some of those tickets yes, to go to the movies. Gift movies. cards to the movies, because yes. that was bomb. Mm -hmm. That was our first date. Our very first date yes. was yeah. what? Toy Story. Toy Story, there you go. Wow. Seriously. It was supposed to be Casino. No, see, it was no. A, I always say Casino. Heat, heat. there heat. you go. I don't know why I say Ooh, casino. Lovey. It's the marathon movies. Anything over three hours is casino to me. Was casino three hours? Yes, it was. I know he was. He was. But we That's tried to go. We didn't it. see it because we the movie started after nine. It was three hours. We looked at each other like, eh, uh -uh. <laughs> I don't really know you I like that. Sleep in the theater, so we went and saw Toy Story. And so Toy Story, yes, Toy Story was our very first true date that we went on. The other ones were kind of like. We got tricked into meeting each other. Then she was kind of like, oh, let me dabble a little bit, go to this little party where he's going to be at. 
Then I was like, well, let me just dive a little bit. Let me go to the party that she's going to be at. And I think we even had like a dinner. No, no. That was after. That was New Year's. It was New Year's dinner. And so so, so so the dinner came after. But we we said, okay, we're going to go out on our own without anybody else around. This is our first time together alone on like us going out. That wasn't really us going. I mean, uh, we weren't alone. We were in a movie theater. We didn't, so have, none, we didn't have none of y'all chaperones either. Oh my goodness. Okay, first of all, it's not the 1850s. And it I wasn't, wasn't Tracy. Chaperone. She was being a chaperone. <laughs> Tracy had a knife on her. She said I had a bow tie. I swear she had a knife. Cut it out. She did. Tracy, what do you think? Tracy, about if you're you? listening, show me your knife. <laughs> so anyway, the reason I bring that up is because that's our thing. When we want to spend time together, whatever, it's like, hey, let's spend some time. We know that that means let's sit on the couch, let's watch something together. Well, that's not true. I mean, we do other stuff, spend time, but that's one of our favorite pastimes. Say it like that. One okay. of our favorite pastimes is to watch movies. Um, I well, both of us prefer the theater. Me for the popcorn, which I really, really miss. I really miss. Can we just COVID? Come on down. I want to go. Do we have back a to moment the of theater. silence for? <laughs> Popcorn. Theater popcorn. Butter in the middle. A little bit more butter on top. The husbands that say, no, I don't want yes. any popcorn. I'm good. Mm-hmm. And then we eat half the bucket. Let me tell you something. If there is ever a thing that makes me mad about Lovey, it is when he eats my popcorn. I say, we go, it, we, we go through this all the time. We'll go to the movies. And I'm like, okay, babe, you know, I, I got to get popcorn. I don't care if I've just had a five course meal and I'm, I'm full. I am going to get some popcorn. So I'll go, I'll get in line. I'm like popcorn, red vines and a soda. And I'm like, lovey, do you want, are you going to eat popcorn? No, I'm not going to eat any. I'm like, are you sure you're not going to eat popcorn? I'm positive. That's in line. And then we get up to the register. I was like, babe, are you sure? I'm, I'm not going to eat any popcorn. And then he gets a little bit like, attitude a little because I already told you I'm not going to eat any popcorn. Okay, so I get the popcorn. We get inside of the theater. Most of the time, he's actually in there sitting down. I come in, I have my popcorn, I have the drink, I have my red vines, I'm getting situated. I'll be like, okay, babe, hold the popcorn so I can get situated. And so he'll, he'll do good the first time. Well, halfway through the previews, he's like, where's the popcorn? <laughs> it's like, uh-uh, you don't get the popcorn. He's like, give me the popcorn. I'm not, I'm not giving you the popcorn. And so we're in there. And the kids behind us are like, shh, mister. <laughs> Don't eat the popcorn. So I always get a big one and then he gets offended. Why you get this big popcorn? I'm like, because I know you're going to eat it. She tells no lies. I tell no lie. None. So anyway, so I we even s- miss that. Right? If I don't get into heaven, it's because of the popcorn. I'm just saying. Okay. God's going to be like, I heard that podcast. I heard about popcorn. that popcorn. <laughs> I saw you. And Tracy did have a knife, so. <laughs> Leave her alone. Really. So uh, the reason why we said this is because this weekend, we were like, you know what, let's, let's sit down and let's just watch a movie. And there was a, a movie that we wanted to watch. We had to choose. We saw one last week. We thought about watching it again, but we ended up watching this other one. Mm-hmm. And it was Loving. So if you don't, if you've never seen Loving, it's the story about, um, it's a true story that took place in Virginia. Um, it was Mildred and, remember his name? Oh my God, what was his name? Rich. Rich, Rich yeah. Richard. So Mildred and Richard Loving, mm-hmm. um, historical reference uh, because they changed the United States. Mm-hmm. And, it, and this movie has special significance for me um, I even told Snooks, as we were watching the movie, I was like, wow. And as soon as it started, I was like, this reminds me of my great-great-grandparents. Oh, that's right. Because your uh, your great-grandmother is half German. She was German. She's German. She and was black, but she was from Germany. And your great-grandfather is from Ireland, right? Correct. So, so it's funny. Couple. Yep. Mm-hmm. So interracial couple. So imagine this. Even before the Lovings, um, back in, I don't even know. Oh, you figure, see, my mom was born like 1946, 1947, somewhere around there. So like in the early 1900s. I was about to say, well, you figure. I, my I great think, Yeah. Well, because grandma, she was born probably around the same time. Well, she's a little younger than my grandmother, but she was born in the 20s. Right. Because my grandma was born in 1925. So yours had to be born probably about 27, 28. That's about right. Well, she was like, well, maybe she was about 
17, 16, 17, right? When she had my mom. So what you're looking at is somewhere in the 1920s, my grandmother was born. So in the turn of the century, my great, great grandfather um, was uh, immigrated to the United States from Ireland. And my great, great grandmother uh, who's black immigrated from Germany. So it's funny to me because they came over to the United States, settled in South Carolina, and you had a man that was Irish. Okay, let's talk about this first. He's Irish. We're not even going to talk about race. You had an Irish guy, immigrated to the United States, married a German <laughs> at the turn of the century. So then you add on another layer. You have a white Irishman that married a black German. And I say black, I mean skin, tone, melanin. Um, so he was just pissed off at the world. He didn't care. He was looking to piss everybody off. And so my great grandparents had this attitude about them like, we don't give a rip what y'all say, what y'all do, we gonna do what we wanna do. And they did apparently. And they just said, you know, and we're gonna do it in the South. Right, of all places. We're gonna do it in the middle of South Carolina and uh, forget all y'all. So this movie is about uh, an interracial couple, uh, Richard Loving and Mildred, and they got married in Washington, D.C. June 2nd, 1958. Dang. And lived in Virginia. And, and a cascade of things transpired after that. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why I, we bring this up is because we looked at each other and we thought, there's a lot of lessons. And so this podcast is going to be about lessons from loving and you can even actually call it you know lessons about loving i like that lessons about loving so what was the i'll tell you the first thing that stood out to me okay tell me okay the very first thing that stood out to me was that this couple so when he asked her the, the way in which he asked her to marry him they were in this little i don't want to give away okay so spoiler alert we're going to give the movie say, away. We're about to talk about the movie. So we're going to talk about the movie. So if you haven't seen it, you know, you might want to go see the movie, then come back to this or see this as the reason for seeing the movie. Listen to this. That's AC. <laughs> okay. We're on YouTube. So anyway, she always trying to correct me. So no, but the thing that said to me was they're in this, this plot of land and he was kind of toying with her a little bit and he had a vision. Okay. I'm going to see if Lovey got, gets this right. Oh, Lovey and loving. Go ahead. <laughs> so th they were dreaming and building a house on an acre that he had purchased that was close to his, close to her parents' home. And when he was actually kind of mapping it out and was like, oh, what, what do you think of this place? And she was like, uh, you mean this land right here? Like this field where I've, yeah, what do you think of it? Uh, you mean where I, the field that I've been in my whole life? And he said, well, what about a house right here? And then he talked about, what about the bedroom? How would you like to have a place right here? And he was vision casting with her in the process of asking her to marry him. And it stood out to me because it was like, even as a couple starting off in that tumultuous time, they took time to dream together. Did I get that right? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, why don't you add your two cents? No, I, I'm just saying, you got it right. You know, he was, he asked her, she, he said he bought the plot of land and so she was like, are you playing? And he said, will you marry me? And because she was pregnant and um, she said, yeah. So they went down, they had to go down to Washington, D.C. And they got married. They took her father with her, with them. And he was he acted as the witness and they came back to uh, Virginia. So let's touch on just the, the highlights as far as like the, the lessons. Instead of giving him like a blow by blow from beginning to end. Well, okay. So what happened next is it's like um, there's this next the, the events after that. That I felt like that was like their last happiness before all of the bad stuff the started, started happening. Yeah. yeah. So basically, in the middle of the night, uh, police came and they arrested them because for them to be married, it, it was illegal and they were breaking the law. They put him in jail. They put her in jail. And they would not, he was able to make bail. She was not able to make bail. And um, one thing that, that happened, and I'm just going to talk about it, was the, the officer told him 
they're not number one don't come back they're not going to release her to him because she's black he's white and um she's going to have to wait there until monday so it doesn't really tell you the day that he was arrested but she had to stay there for a few days he didn't like it he kept going back he went back once and tried to like try to get her out but then he was like don't come back I'll, I'll i'll arrest you too but one thing that stood out to me was that even though he could not be there like with her he would sit inside his car outside, outside the of jail. the prison yeah. of the jail and just kind of watch over the jail and i almost cried because i was like man he was like this is my wife this is the woman that i love and i'm risking my own freedom basically because I am going to make sure that I watch over her, even in this little this little space that I have. You know, he took the time and he sat there and during the night and he watched up looking at that building over his over his wife, the window or whatever. Yep. Didn't necessarily say that that was the window she was at, but that was the gist of you know. And I I just was like, that's right, man. You know, she was by herself, but she was not alone. Right. Yeah. There you go. And that stood out to me as well, because I think it's one of those things that we need to look at. I mean, first we talked about they cast a vision together when it came to the relationship. But then on top of that, even when they were separate, they were together. Mm -hmm. It was like their spirits were bound together. And and what's crazy was at no point did she accuse, I mean, it's, I mean, again, this is a movie, so there's some, um, some creative license here, I believe, but she didn't call him out his name. Where are you going? Why are you leaving me? You never loved me. She, there was no accusations in that. She had confidence in their love and his commitment to her. And it seemed like it was in her nature as well. But and when he came back and, and when her father actually bailed her out, mm -hmm. he was able to get her. bail her out on Monday. She got on the porch and they told him that he, the police, you know, said that he can't come back over here no more, whatever. Yeah. And she paused. She looked back on the, the porch. The first thing she was doing was she hugged her sister, but she's looking around. She was like, where's Richard? And they told her. And before, when everyone else went in the house, she paused for a moment and looked back at the, the front of the house. Like, you know, is my man going to come? But it wasn't like, you saw this look in her face. Like there was still a, an expectation that he'll be here. He's coming. And then he did show up and risk everything yet again. This is a couple that risked everything. So I, I just kind of want to think about this too. When, you know, the scripture says, like a thief in the night, the, um, mm -hmm. the, the enemy will come like a thief in the night. And you see how they came, the police, the, the police. They crept up. They, kept, the they came in the middle of the night when everyone was sleeping. It was by total surprise. And it's like, there's so many attacks on um, your marriage a lot of times in your relationships. And they come as a, it's a surprise, you know? It's not like you can see it happening a lot of times, like, oh, here he is, you know, here's the problems. But they, they, they creep up and then, ah, it's right here. So how you work through it is very important. You know, they could have, they could have, um, fought and not that they didn't fight because I'm, I'm sure that they did but the the end goal was we are going to be together that is what this is about this is my husband this is my wife i know that is not going to be easy number one because it's illegal but i love you you love me and we are going to work and we're going to fight and we're going to stay together and we're going to make it work so i just gotta throw that out there because that was that that kind of Soon as I saw the police officers coming, I was like, mm, deep in the night. No, that's true. I think that's great. And it's, it's funny. You mentioned, you know, they didn't fight. Maybe they did. I don't know. I have no idea what their true demeanor was. I need to read the actual book. But one thing that was truly interesting to me, and this goes on throughout the book, and you may have some notes on this, different points. But the, what I'm going to say is something that transpired multiple times throughout the movie. And that was... You know, the why in the word crazy. When we talk about crazy, compassionate, real, accountable, zealous, yielding, they were yielding to each other throughout this entire process. There were moments in the movie where Richard was like, no, we're not doing this. This is, this is my decision. This is what I want to do. And she did not question it. And she sat there and said, you know, like, she's like, I, I won't do that without my husband. 
And there were moments where, she, more so moments where she was like, because she was a very, um, uh, a very soft-spoken, like very soft demure soft -spoken. type personality. And Richard knew enough that when she said something assertively, she meant it. And it was worth it. And for her to do that, he listened. He yielded. Yeah. Well, she said, we're going to go see the attorney or the lawyer or whatever. Yeah, I, I like that. He, so, uh, let me just say this. is so funny because when <laughs> he said, Mildred, come here. And she got up and she, and, and she went. Lovey was like, did you see what she just did? You need to take some lessons from her. And I started <laughs> rolling. I was like, really? <laughs> and then I said, he only said it once. Yeah, he, he didn't repeat himself. <laughs> you need to take some lessons from her. And then there was another time when she went outside and she said what she said. They they had words and she was like, basically, um, this is what we doing. And she went back in the house and he was standing on the porch. She did that twice. Yeah, she, she did. She did the, the first time she she kind of put her foot down was when she said, well, the lawyer wants to help us. And well, we ain't got no money for no lawyer. It's going to be free. And then he was quiet. Like, I just spoke. And then she looked at him and says, we're going on Thursday. Yeah, we're going on Thursday. <laughs> and so he just went along. He was like, OK. And the second time was he came home and there, she was being interviewed. Never really said what who she was being interviewed by, but she was being interviewed in their home. And he was heated. And he interrupted the interview and said, I want to see you outside. No, he said, come here. Oh, he said, come here. So they, and then, so she got up politely. They stopped recording. She walked outside and he said, I don't want them here. I don't remember the exact words. Those snacks probably remembers verbatim and everything. But he said, basically, I don't want them here. I don't think we should be doing this. She looked at him. She goes, I think it's a good thing for us and we need this. And she just walked away, went inside. And guess who went inside and he, sat next to her? He came and sat down. Well, he came and sat down in the still, chair. But it's still next to her, but a different chair. Different chair. And with their daughter. <laughs> And then we bring that up because, again, we're not trying to give away the movie, but there's a lesson to be learned there that in the strength that you have and when you have specific convictions and when you have a base level of trust and respect for each other, that you will defer and submit. Everyone always talks about Ephesians and they talk about, you know, you've got to be a Proverbs, you know, was it Proverbs 31 wife, Proverbs 32 wife? And... They, they say all these things about what the wife needs to oh, do. Oh, like Ephesians. But well, there's yeah, Ephesians, but Proverbs. Uh... And, and, but what happens is people always get caught up in submission, but submission goes both ways. But you can't have submission unless you have that, that foundation, if you will, of trust and respect. And this couple trusted each other and they respected each other enough to where that when somebody actually took the lead and said, this is what we're going to do, the other one was like, okay, well, let me just go on, let me go on with him. And I think we need a lot more of that in relationships as well. Again, this is lessons on loving. And then the other thing that um, so what ended up happening is um, they had to leave the um, state. They had to leave the state of Virginia, and that was the contingent. There was their really. Oh my gosh, can't even get it out. Their sentence was suspended, contingent upon them leaving the state of Virginia. They could not be together in the state at the same time. So what they ended up doing is they went to a different state. I don't remember what state they ended, they actually went to. Washington. Oh, so they went back to Washington. Okay, so, well, one thing that I noticed is that, so she was pregnant with her first child and he was watching her. He mm -hmm. watched her and, you know, he know, you know, you know your spouse. We always talk about, you know your spouse, you know your spouse's moods, you know when they're, um, feeling some kind of way a lot of times when they're you know despondent or they're not really talking so she's sitting on the couch and he's watching tv and he looks over at her and she's just looking down and she's not being herself and he just watched her and I noticed that was kind of a theme with him throughout the throughout the movie whenever he would like check on her and he would make sure that she was okay and he said to her what can I do what can I do? He'd always ask that. What can I do? It's funny. I wrote that down too. Oh, really? When um, I just wrote, he sees her. I wrote, yeah. a, I wrote Apollo, but I don't know what it was. So here, here's the significance of it. When they were watching a television with the, the woman who was allowing them to live yeah, in their house, Laura. it wasn't just, you know, regular old TV show. It was a space 
launch. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which was a major event, as you can as you can determine back then. And so this thing's taking off. It's a momentous occasion, and everyone across the world is, if they have a television in front of the TV, watching. And he's watching. And then when he looked over, like Snook said, if you imagine someone sitting there on the couch, it's a darkened room. The only light coming in is from the television. And when he looked over at his wife, she just had a gaze on the floor. And it was a distant gaze where you think that, you know, it's like a longing gaze. Of, I want to go somewhere else. I don't want to be here. I want like a miserable look like I'm just here because I have to be here. Mm -hmm. And he saw that. And like Snook said, he constantly look to her to gauge how she was feeling. Mm -hmm. It was like he was saying to her, you're not in this by yourself. You're not suffering alone. When you suffer, we suffer. And kind of like, I mean, when we're going through things, if Lovey's having a bad day or, or there's something that's wrong, I'm like, okay, what can I do to help? How can I be of assistance to you? What do you need to um, offload? I'm, I'm here. So when you're, when, when my spouse is suffering, I'm also suffering because we're in this together. And I think that some of us in relationships, sometimes we miss that because we look at it like it's their problem. Oh, well, he got attitude, that's his thing, that's on him. Or she tripping again, that's on her. I'm just gonna do me and I'm gonna do me. And so everyone's just doing each other, but we're not doing us, you mm -hmm. know? So I, I, I love that about how they, um, that, that was depicted in the movie, what he was, at any time you could see him, he would just watch her. So my question to each and every one of you that are listening right now, whether you're in a, a marriage, you're in a committed long-term relationship, or if you're post-marital, or even if you're engaged, when you look at your significant other, do you see them? Don't just look at them. She's staring at me right now. Do you see them? Because in the movie, the way it was portrayed, Richard saw her mm -hmm. and it wasn't just a one-time thing. He never stopped seeing her. I'm a firm believer and I'll, and I'll venture to say that when we talked about earlier, when she was by herself, but not alone, when he was parked outside that jail and refused to leave, he saw her through those walls. That was him. She didn't know that he was there. She may have felt him. I don't know, but that was his way of I got eyes on you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like that song. You know, it always takes me back to Tupac, me and my girlfriend. And, and it's one of those things where that that's what it was. It was that that air. It was that that mentality of us against the world. Mm -hmm. And and <laughs> truth be told, it was, it really was the Lovings versus the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, the trial itself was called, you know, uh Richard Loving Al, at all, at all, whatever. Sorry. Excuse me, Miss High Mike. No, <laughs> no, but <laughs> but it was him versus the state of Virginia, but it was really him versus the United States because it set a precedent in the Supreme Court that then opened the doors for interracial marriage across the United States. Yeah, it set the precedent, so other other uh, states started following that. Um, changing things because of them, because they were brave. And, and, and it, we're required to be brave. Why are you looking like that? Now I'm trying to figure out, were my great grandparents even married? Well, yeah, they were. I think they were. But see, remember, okay, we're about to go on a different little tangent thing here. Remember when I would talk to grandma and grandma would talk about how they traveled and stuff. Yeah. They right. traveled in different cars on the trains. He would sit up. He had to be up in the very front and then yeah, they'd have to sit and back. sit in the back in, in the, the caboose. The colored, the yeah, colored basically. section. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I don't know how they lived. I don't know if she acted like she was his maid or what. I don't know. Maybe they they stayed off the grid or whatever it was. But uh, see, I got I can ask my aunt Nisi, but yeah, yeah now, now I'm kind of curious mm -hmm. because I know that when um, what's his name from the show on uh, the comedian uh, from South Africa? Uh, crime, uh, born a crime. Oh, Trevor Noah. Tre Trevor Noah. I know when he tells his story about how his mom, how he had to actually, his mom had to act like she was the nanny, mm -hmm. you know, and walk with him while his father walked ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I just, I just wonder if that kind of stuff transpired, you know, back then. But anyway, so Levin's got my mind. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of going off on a tangent. <laughs> What's something else that stood out to you about the movie? Oh, so one thing that it makes me think about when we talk about Iron Tribe. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Is, you you know, so Iron Tribe, you know, we talk about uh, couples, um, like couples, like-minded couples. And, Which is based off of Proverbs 27, 17. Right. But so who, who are you surrounding yourself with? And I say that because so when initially in the beginning of the movie, after they got out of jail, after he got out of jail and Mildred was still in jail, his good friend Raymond, he was with Raymond and they were kind of looking around and, you know, now uh, Richard is feeling some kind of way about all the neighbors. And he said, who told who reported us a rich uh, Raymond said somebody had to talk. So people will always act like they have your back mm. in front of you, but then they go behind your back and they talk about you or they do, do things to hurt you because maybe they're jealous of you or the relationship that you have with your, with your spouse. So everyone was saying he shouldn't have did what he did. He shouldn't have married her because he knew better. They knew, you know, this kind of thing could happen. His mom said it and he was like, oh, I thought you liked her. She said, I like a whole bunch of people, but you shouldn't have married that girl, you know? And then another, his other friend, um, I don't even know who he actually was, but, you know, he made it a point to be like when uh, Richard said that he was going to marry her, this is before they even got married. He was like, what you want to get married for? You'd be fine just living up in that house and with your girl, you don't need to get a wife and you don't have to be married you'd be living fine you'd be whatever yep, you know that. same dude later on after there was heck of drama after so much stuff was gone they've been arrested a couple of times all that and uh they're out there getting a drink they, this is after they, they this had is a, after they actually moved back to a different county in virginia and they were out living um like at a farmhouse right and they came back because he had like a race to deal with and so anyway so they're all hanging out again him and his so-called boys and one of his boys started popping off and basically said, well, you know, you know, the difference is, I'm not gonna tell you what he said completely, but he basically told him, all you need to do is get a divorce. That's all you gotta do is leave her. All you gotta do is get a divorce. You got and an easy fix. All, it'd be, all you gotta do is leave. Yep. And he said, so all I gotta do is leave. All you gotta do. So he sat there drinking and that night, I don't want to give away the whole movie, but that night when he went home. I keep saying that. I know, I keep giving away the movie. It's okay. He said, spoiler alert, but when he goes back, even with that presented, this dude was planting, the devil was on his shoulder, planting a, you know, a, a seed of doubt in him. And he went home, sat on the bed, and Mildred, excuse me, sat up. And he cried. He wept. And he basically said, I can take care of you. He kept saying, I can take care of you. And she's like, I know. I know you can take care of me. And he just, I could take care of you. I could take care of you. And that was his thing. I am going to take care of you. And I think um, we get, you know, you, like you said, that 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 little, that feeling of, am I by myself in this? I mean, you know, like, dang, I thought you, because uh, kind of the way he looked at him was like, for real, dude? But he never said anything. Raymond was mad. Oh, Raymond was heated. I'm, I'm surprised like, Raymond didn't jump across the table. It was Virgil. It was Virgil. Apologize, Virgil. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because they said it. Yeah, but, you know, just how it, it almost, I was like, hmm. So when you have people like that in your life that they say certain things, I've seen this happen. They'll say something, oh, girl, you need to leave him because he ain't this, he's not that, whatever, whatever. And then you being the one you leave, what, two weeks later, she trying to be with him, oh, oh, you know? I, so I'm like, well, who's Virgil in this situation? I don't know if it's family or... Oh girl, you know I could take care of you. I wouldn't. I would have never left. I would have, you know. <laughs> Reminds like, me when dude, I was in the service. Come on. I was in the service and uh, I was with this one. Well, same situation. I was with this one person, and she was acting up, doing her a little dirt. Not that I was an angel, but she was doing her stuff, and I was trying to do the right thing, you know, and be like a good dude and all that. <laughs> and she had this one girlfriend. I was like, you know, you know, you too good for her, and da 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 da, and. She and I ended up hooking up. Wow, Virgil. And but it was one of the I, calling you Virgil. I told you, well, you know my past. So, <laughs> but we did. But it, it, what was a trip to me though was that it was like accepted in their little that was like 
That was just what they did. Right. And so basically, oh, you she, you you too good for her. You shouldn't be with her because she's not this and that or whatever. There was an ulterior motive. Absolutely. She had um, underlying uh, reasons for telling you that because she wanted you to leave her so you can come over there and be with her. Right. The other girl, so you can and, be with her. And I'm convinced that Virgil, as soon as, as soon as Rich would have divorced her, Virgil would have been the first one over there knocking on Mildred's door. Right. What you need, girl? You know, I got you. Oh, because you know, Rich, he was wrong for what he did. He should have never. That's, I mean, maybe it wasn't, he I've wasn't doing that. But I've seen it happen. We have seen that happen. That's why we talk about having the Iron Tribe and having like minded couples or like minded people, um, people that care about your relationship that don't just smile in your face and, and say, oh yeah, you know, uh, we got your back or I got your back or I'm here for you or I'm this and that. And then they go behind your back and then they talk about you or they talk about your spouse or your person to your face to try to get rid of that person because they want to get in their spot. Right. So be aware of who you surround yourself with, who you're talking to, who is in your inner circle. You know, that's get you an iron tribe like us. Like us, exactly. Like and you know, and, it, and it's, it's if you're having difficulty with any of this. You know, we we ain't gonna we're, like we heard in the very beginning. We invite you to come to our workshop at the end of the month, and we can discuss it even further. But it's one of those things where we talk about what it means to actually be crazy in your relationship. You know, the compassionate, the real, the accountable, the zealous, and the yielding. And each and every one of you needs to know that we come at you from that perspective with, with scriptural support Yeah. for that. And then we also go into your DISC assessment, looking at helping you understand your own personality and how that relates to your, your spouse or significant other and how to read other individuals as well. But it's all incorporated. And I tell you that because in this movie, one of the lessons was that Mildred and Richard they knew each other. They knew when one person was pushing, the other one knew that they were going to be receiving. When the other one was receiving, the other one knew that it's time for me to push. When they saw hesitation, it was like they were, we talk, the Bible talks about being equally yoked. This couple, from the, way, from the portrayal in the movie, were equally yoked because they had each other's back no matter what. There was an incident that took place when they were in the city and she hated being in the city. And an accident happened to their child. And she had said, I'm not raising my family here. Mm -hmm. He didn't get mad. He didn't say, well, this is where my job is at. Da, 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 da. I mean, he could, I mean, he had, he could have had some just reasons to get angry and say, I don't care what you say, we're not going back. Look, one of the biggest reasons we stepped foot back in the state of Virginia together, we're both going to jail for 25 years. Minimum. And so he had lots of reasons, but again, he saw her, he knew her. You have to know yourself and know what you contribute and know your other person so that we can contribute where you need to, so you can come together. And that's what our workshop is all about. So please, 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 this is my, my plug to have you. It's free to come to the workshop at the end of the month. The, the, the link is in the show notes. Make sure you click on that and register. But that also leads me to knowing each other so well that when when things go south when things get really bad and they've already been accosted by the police they've been thrown in jail multiple times somebody put a brick oh yeah because uh well, life magazine ran a story on them mm -hmm. on them together as they were preparing their their case to try and go to the supreme court the aclu right. was uh preparing mm -hmm. and he went home because he thought, okay, something could happen. He thought he was being followed when he was going home. And once again, he called his boy. Right. So what happened was he was leaving his job and there was a brick inside of his car with a, a copy of the article. With the picture. With a picture actually of her wrapped around the brick saying something about illegal, buried illegal or whatever. I can't remember what it was, but it was sitting on the front of his, of his car. I mean, a front seat of, the, of in the car. And so he saw, he picked it up, he looked at it, he starts looking around, nothing was out of the norm. And, you know, so he dropped the brick and then he's driving home. And like Lovey was saying, there was a truck that was coming and it was coming up fast. And all he thought about was, I let me get home to my, to my family. 
like protect him or whatever because the truck was coming and everywhere he turned the truck turned but eventually he he made it to his house the truck didn't come so he sent his son to call Raymond and said and bring the guns and Raymond came and Raymond sat on the porch with them and he asked him he says um did anybody say anything to you and Rich was like not to my face you know <laughs> so it's like you know he he was in hostile to, hostile territory you know and so he, the question is it. are you guys gonna you're gonna come through some hostile waters and I'm not saying it's gonna be a brick I'm not gonna say it has to involve guns but it will be some people that are going to be very hostile towards your relationship. For us, it was people threatening to boycott our marriage. It was people saying they refused to come. There were people that didn't want us to get married. And yet you have to know that this is what you want to do. Did you pray on it? Did you move forward together you know, in unison? And so, we say all of this because we want you to really, 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 really take stock of your relationship, take stock of your marriage. It's not going to be easy. Right. And, at times. And kind of like you were saying, you know, not everyone is going to be down for you and down for your marriage. And a lot of times, it, you know, I don't say a lot of times, sometimes the very people that are not down for your marriage or down for you and the relationship, it's going to surprise you because these are people who are close to you. They're not always those that are in the fifth and sixth row. Some of them are in the first and second row too, you know? Um, but one thing that I, I, I think about, I was wondering what were they thinking, you know, going through all of this, what, what was it that they were thinking? Because like Virgil had said, it would have been easier to leave the marriage. Hmm. All your troubles be over. All you got to do is divorce her. You know, all you got to do is leave. So what, what was it that they were thinking? Did, did they ever just stop and be like, is any of this worth it? Is what we're doing worth it? We have to leave the state. We have to um, be away from our families. We can't, we're, our kids are in the city where we're a country folk, you know, it's not really, it's accepted out here um, somewhat, but it's not like, this is not where I really want to be. My heart is not in it. So I'm living here and I'm able to be here, but this is just a shell of me because my soul and my heart is not really being here. I am here because I have to be here, but my heart and my soul is, is somewhere else. All right. So the easiest thing would have been to say, you know what? We tried, but we're not going to, we, it's not going to work. You know, let's just get divorced or whatever that would have been the easiest thing to do, you know, looking at it, because from, especially from Virgil's perspective, all you gotta do is divorce. So well, did that thought ever, you know, I wonder what were they thinking? Obviously they stayed there like, we ain't going nowhere. Right, they stayed together, but earlier we had mentioned that he saw her and he continued to see her. When they moved back out to the country from the city, there was this one scene where they, they both pull up in their vehicles <laughs> yeah. and for, the, for, for those of you that are actually, so, you know, Snooks and I live in the city. She's never really been, like, lived in the country. Yeah, I'm not country. And, this is country to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to say I lived in the country, but I spent time in the country. Because my well, oddly enough, my family, half my family's from Virginia. And so when I would go back, I finally remember um, all the time that I spent, all the summers I spent um, with my aunties and my cousins um, back in Virginia and my uncle. And... There's a sound. She was like, "What's?" Because Nick said, "Well, why is she pausing?" And I told her, "It's like so when there, there's a particular scene, and it just oh, yeah, she gets out, and she just she pauses and she kind of tilts her head and closes her eyes." And Snooks is like, "What?" And I'm like, "It's the cicadas." She's she's listening to the sound. Yeah, I was like, "What's that?" She's listening to the sound of just the country sounds. It's it's the bugs. It's the wind. There's the smell. There's a certain little thing, and, I, and I, I know exactly what she was talking about because when I had the opportunity to take my family back to Virginia to visit the family, as soon as we got back over to Uncle Aunt, Uncle Andrew and Aunt Emily's, <laughs> they got the, you know, you know what it's like back in Virginia. So they got no fence lines, and then in the back of the house is nothing but woods that my cousin Donnie and Andrew and I, uh, <laughs> Andre and I, were, uh, not, were never supposed to go in, but we always did. There's a certain smell. There's a certain sound. And 
I, my kids thought I lost my mind. The moment I saw a firefly, saw a June bug, and I was immediately, I reverted back from my 30s or 40s. I think it was like late 30s, early 40s. And I was immediately 12 years old again. And it was just such a cool thing. And I was trying to convince people to go catch some June bugs with me. And, but there was that moment where she tilted her head and she could hear everything. And he was watching her. He glanced over as he was trying to undo the straps on the other car. He looked over at her and he just watched her. And she had this smile on her face. Which made him smile. Yep. So you got to have those moments where you see her consistently, know that you're in it together, whether it's a hostile environment, but really take the time to make sure that you're filling each other's needs. And I'm not talking about, it's not about sexual needs. It's, I mean, there is that part, but it's not sexual. It's not about the financial stuff. It's filling their soul with what they need as well. And throughout this entire movie, the lovings completed each other. They were together. And it's, it's, it's just, a, it's an amazing story. And we wanted to share that because I think there's so many lessons. Watch the movie yourself. If you've already seen it, watch it again. It, it, it makes me think too about like some of the things that we go through and some of the things that we focus on. Um, I'm, I sat there and I was like, oh my gosh, some of our, our, our challenges were so trivial compared <laughs> to what they had to go through, uprooting, going to prison, not knowing, or jail, but, you know, being faced with going to prison and just all these different things. And, and I'm not trying to make light of anyone's um, issues or challenges that they have in their relationship, but l learning lessons, lessons from the lovings, I'm like, oh, so that just gives me hope that if I really, really want to do it, how, how, how hard am I going to work at it? Right. You know, I'm not in danger of losing my life. I'm not in danger of losing my home. I'm, I'm not in danger of never seeing my family, you know, my, my family again, because I had to go and live somewhere else because of a decision that I made to be with my husband. Um, I know that, like I said, there are some things that go on in relationships that you're like, okay, I don't know if I can deal with this, but just looking at them and the things that they went through it trivialized a lot of the stuff I feel like not a lot of it but some of the things that we went through I'm like wow if if they could say okay we're going to keep going forward because it's about our love we said we're going to be together and this is what we're going to do we're going to do everything within our power to be together you know it makes me think of okay so don't pull the plug so easily or just right you know barring abuse Oh, of course, barring like abuse. we always say, I always throw that in there. But barring abuse, it does. It, it gives you perspective, mm -hmm. and we'd love for each and every one of you to actually watch the movie, and then give, give some yeah, give some perspective. You know, add something to go to go to iTunes, go to uh, Apple Podcasts, we'll leave a review of this particular episode, episode one hundred twenty three, but also give us your take on the movie. What lesson? Did you get from the movie? You can also email us at coaching at marriedintocrazy.com or you can email us at uh, snooksandlovey at gmail.com. There's so many different ways that you can reach us, but we'd love to know what lesson you got. You can even hit us up over on our social media. You can uh, go to our Facebook page, Married Into Crazy, and just drop a message, drop a note. Some of this is what I learned. This is, the, this is my takeaway lesson from loving. We'd love to hear it and maybe even revisit and talk about some of the lessons that all of you have as well. So one thing too, it's like well, his legacy was him taking care of her. She always said that. I mean, she said that, you know, after he passed away, right before she passed away, she's like, I miss him. He took care of me. And that, that was his mission. I'm going to take care of you. That was his chief concern. Yeah. So what is your legacy for your relationship? Can you be loving in your relationship as well? Because that's one thing that, as well as I think we do, I think there's always room for growth. And that's going to be one of our major goals is to be loving like the lovings. And my goal is to always make sure I see you. 
Yeah. Can you see me? No. And my wish <laughs> for all of you is that you see each other as well. And see us on YouTube. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button. And, no. <laughs> I, I ain't playing, but <laughs> what we want to do now is give you two for the road with the I can can. Again, that is the 40 affirmations that are in the I can can for couples. So we each grab one, and this is the focus for the week. So, dun, dun, dun. you went first the last few times. I need to first this time. Mine says, I can give a long, warm, oops, embrace. Oh, and I dropped it. A long, a long lecture. I'm like, you sure can, babe. <laughs> <laughs> really? You're going to talk to me now? No, I'm fine. Says, I can hold my partner's hand in public, which I always do. Even when I don't want to. I make lovey hold my hand. It's not that I don't want to. It's just there's times Even when, when it's anyway, hot. we've talked about that. In the middle of summer, when this is scorching, she still wants to hold my hand. I want everybody to know that I'm with you. That's right. Claim your man. So what we're going to do now is what we always do. And you'll it's it's more prominent on the audio version, not on the video on YouTube. But we're going to spend the next eight minutes and 46 seconds in silence. As a matter of fact, um, this means as much now as it did when we first started. Originally, the eight minutes and 46 seconds was to observe the silence for those countless names that are forgotten, not just George Floyd, but it was about George Floyd, the, the, the time that he was oppressed for eight minutes and 46 seconds with the knee on his, on his neck. This eight minutes and 46 seconds of silence that we're asking you to take is to reflect and really reflect and think about how you can continue to be a phenomenal citizen in these United States, how you can actually ensure that social justice continues to move forward so that every citizen is um, able to live and be afforded the, the, the rights that are within the Constitution of the United States. Eight minutes and 46 seconds to think about how you can actually continue to help democracy move forward in the United States and preserve it with every person regardless of the amount of melanin in their skin is able to be equal. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying really hard not to get political about what just transpired at, at the Capitol. So I'm gonna keep my comments to myself, but take this time to reflect on how you can make this world a better place. So until the next time, be blessed. Bye-bye.